All right. Okay, so we're going to get started and we're going to start with praying. Father, I just thank you so much for letting us come here today. I'm very thankful to be able to teach these children across um, through Zoom. And I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be here. And I pray that you just host this, this meeting. And I ask, I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come in and just to let us to talk about what is honoring to you. And we ask that we are only able to teach your truth and your words. And we, ask, we just invite you into this meeting this time. We thank you for the Sabbath rest, this Shabbat. And we invite you to, we thank you for the peace that you have given us. And have your way here today. In Yeshua Messiah's name, amen. Well, I'm not normally nervous, but you guys see Pastor Matt, Pete, and Jason have jumped on, and they've kind of just <laughs> made me a little uncomfortable here, but no, they only came because I invited them, so um, how about everyone say hi to Pastor Matt and Pete and Jason? Is there a way to see everybody? Yes, so if you go to participants, you can go to gallery view, and then you can see everybody. Oh, 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 hey, everybody. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so since we're getting started and they've never been on, Havila, can you um, sh shake your or wave your hand? This is Rita's daughter. So you yep. talk to her and Chris is a lot yeah. on, online. So there's Havila. And then we have the Bivens. So can you say hi, Bivens? What's up, so And then we have Lily and Lexi, and they have their camera off. They're probably hanging out in bed. <laughs> But they're there um, hanging together. And then we have the Ardens. And you guys know the Ardens. So, um, hey guys. yeah. So, um, just as we're getting started, I just want to say we're getting ready to talk about the names of God and the different titles he goes by. And this can be a controversial topic. And so, I'm trying to make sure that I present this in a biblically accurate way and in a way that honors God. So, I've been sharing the emails and the in my newsletter with Pastor Matt and Jason and Pete. And I was telling Jason this morning that, you know, I was a little uncomfortable. So he said he would jump on and he brought Pastor Matt and Pete along with him. So so they will be able to interject whenever they want as I go over um, what we're gonna talk about. But our scripture that we're going to talk about right now is in Psalm 9, 10, and it says, those who know your name put their trust in you. So when you think about understanding who someone is, when you understand who they are, you can actually have a better relationship with them when you understand all the things that they do. So I want you to think about your mom or your dad for a minute. They're not just mom or dad, right? They, they play different roles in your life. I personally, how many of you think of different roles that I play, that I can play, and then I can add to it? What are some things, titles that I have? Havla, what's one thing that, the title that I have in my life? Um, I have the titles like teacher, and mother, and wife, and friend. Yeah, so those are, those are definitely one, and for me, to you, I'm your teacher, right? So I'm your teacher. Um, to Jason, I'm his wife. To my um, children, I'm a mother. To my mom, I'm a daughter. So we all, and I like to call them hats, but I change it to the titles. We all put on different hats or roles in our life. And as we begin to understand the roles and the hats that we, that we play in our life, does that change who I am? No, it just defines me more, right? Those are who, all the things that make up who I am. So when we think about the names of Yahweh or God, we need to understand all the roles he can play in our life. And, and the more we understand who he is, the titles and the roles that he plays in our life, the more we can put our trust in him, just like it says in Psalms 910. Those who know your name put their trust in you. So by understanding his roles and his names, we are able to put our trust in God, in Yahweh. So not only am I a daughter, a sister, a mom, a teacher, a friend, I'm a leader. Um, I am a, a, cook. Customer, a, a cook. I'm a customer when I go to the store. I housekeeper. am a housekeeper. I don't like that title at all. But there's a lot of things that I can do um, throughout life that define who I am, that help make up who I am. Sometimes when I was CrossFit, I, was, I tried to be an athlete, not a good one. 
now I'm now I'm just trying to to be someone who's working out. So those are just some of the roles that I have um, in my life. And so I want us to look at Proverbs 18:10, where it says this: the name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. So not only when we understand the titles and the roles that he has, we're able to run to him and be safe when we understand what his name is. In Psalms 27, it says, some nations boast on chariots and horses, but we boast on the name of the Lord our God. If we don't understand who he is, we can't boast in him. We can't be comfortable in serving him, right? So those are some of the things. And Romans 10, 13 says, everyone can't, can, that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And in Psalms 9, 10, for those, um, again, go back to the scripture. And I hope you memorize this specific one. For those who know your name, trust in you. For you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. So I am going to be honest. I am still learning about this. This is something that I've heard all my Christian walk, but it's not something I've really studied out. So I am still learning. That's why I've invited Matt and Pete and Jason in. Um, but first, we're going to start with Yahweh. I am who I am. In Exodus 3, who this person went and was appearing in front of a burning bush. Who was that particular prophet? Does anyone know? Um, I'm asking in a weird way. Havila? Moses? Yes, yeah. Moses was, um, yes, in the wilderness and God appeared before him and he said to them, he said to Moses, and he, he started appearing to him in the burning bush and God told Moses that he needed to go back to Egypt to bring the Israelites out. And Moses asked God in, in chapter three, verses 13 to 15, he says, then Moses said to God, if I come to the people and say to them, um, the God of your fathers has sent me. And they asked me, well, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And so he's like, okay, so this thing, this God, is, this is appearing to me. Pastor Matt, just jump in anytime. And um, he appears to Moses and Moses is like, well, who am I supposed to tell him who sent him? So this is the first time we actually understand the name of God, who we, we actually get the experience. God reveals his name. All the way up before from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, he was not, he didn't have a name. So Moses, God says to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, to say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And then God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And thus I'm to remember throughout all the generations. So God revealed him, his name to Moses for the very first time, his real name um, to Moses at the bush. And that is the name Yahweh. And it's spelled yod He vav He. I think some people say Y-H-W-H, Y-H-V-H. Those are all out of my understanding. Like it's just Yahweh. And people pronounce it different ways. Um, Pastor Matt, you want to jump in right here before we talk about Elohim? Anything you want to add? Oh, it's unmuted. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Yahweh, as as we pronounce it, yeah, Yahweh uh, was uh, the formal name that was carried throughout Israel's tradition um, that was given to Moses or revealed to Moses. And uh, most popular opinion, uh, which I lean towards, is the 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 all existence one, the the I am who I am, if you will. And so, Katie, you absolutely nailed it. Uh, this, this is the God being revealed to Israel and Moses, uh, that has no other God before him, has no other God above him, doesn't report to anyone else. All existence comes through him. Um, and, uh, and he is the self-existent one. And so, uh, yeah, I think you absolutely nailed that. And it's such a powerful statement, uh, because no other gods in the ancient world of the pagan nations could ever even come close of claiming such a status uh and wait in a name and so uh, yeah absolutely i think that totally agree and, and, and that's what makes that moment in the story of the exodus just so potent 
So Yahweh is the name that people said, um, or that they would use. And from this point on, this is when you'll find it in the scriptures. Now, um, the, the Jewish people uh, honor God's name. And so they were very particular about how they wrote it, which is why we have the different, just the, is it called the tetra, tetra am I going to say that wrong? Just the letters, right? The tetragram. Yeah. Tetragram. See, I told yeah. you, I'm still learning. Um, so that's why they are very particular about how they wrote it, how they said it. And so um, they wanted to keep his name just for reverence. You, you think back to the, um, the Ten Commandments, it says you are to, um, is it not, you're to honor his name, you're not to profane his name, you're to represent him in the right way. And so a lot of people think that that means like, if you just say, oh, um, oh God, or oh my gosh, or something like that. A lot of people think that that is actually using the Lord's name in vain. And that's not actually um, as um, correct. Actually, when we are looking at using the Lord's name in vain is when we take Yahweh, who he is, I am who I am, and we misrepresent his character, who he is. When we are representing him to other people and we represent him in a false way, when Moses was leading the children out of Israel and God told him to strike the rock, Moses was aggravated with the people, with the complaining. God wasn't aggravated with the people. Moses was. And Moses hit that rock angrily three times and he added to what God told him to do. And he misrepresented God, portraying God as angry and, and frustrated with him. And, and Moses was actually, that wasn't what God was saying. And, and Moses had a severe consequence for misrepresenting the Lord, using the Lord's name in vain, by misrepresenting him, he wasn't able to enter the promised land. And so that was a severe consequence. So if Moses, a prophet, someone who led the people out of Israel, someone whose face shined with the glory of the father because of how much time he spent with him, can, can have such a severe consequence of not entering into the promised land. How much do you think God wants us to honor the Lord's name as well? Does he expect us to represent him in a right way? Yeah. So you think back where Yeshua talks to other people, we are to be the salt and the light of the world. We're to be good image bearers. That is honoring the Lord's name. When we are not good image bearers, we are defaming the Lord's name. So we aren't keeping his name well. So I do like to tell my children, this is an opinion. It's not scripture. That if people don't like you say, oh God, or something like that. And they, they think that you're using the Lord's name in that way. Just don't say it. It's not that hard. Um, so you, you just respect people for where they are. So sure. yeah, Kate, go oh, ahead. Sorry. No, I think you absolutely nailed it. Yeah. The, the, I am who I am, or I will be who I will be is a, is another translation, but yeah, Yahweh, this existent one, um, the power is, is in the name there. And uh, one thing, one way that it was explained to me about taking the Lord's name in vain, have any of you guys ever been a part of a soccer team or a t-ball team, baseball team, sports team? Any, a couple of you? All right. Have nothing. No sports. Have, okay. <laughs> Did they give you a jersey to wear? A special uniform that you have to wear? What does that represent? Why do you have to wear a uniform? So you know who you're playing for. You know what team you're a part of, right? What would happen if you wore the other team's uniform on your team? Would that be a bit confusing? It'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? No one would know what's going on. They wouldn't know who you're associated with. Uh, and you would actually maybe bring shame to the other team because you're scoring points against them. Um, you know, when, when we're called to be followers of God, we're kind of given that jersey. And his, that jersey is his name upon us, if you will. And so when we walk out into the world, we're wearing that jersey. And when we act in a way that is not right for the team we're playing on, when we act in a way that is against the ways of God, um, that's dishonoring of the team we're playing for. That's dishonoring of his name, if you will. And so that's how it was always explained to me is that when we bear his name, it's like wearing the jersey with his name on it. People see us. They see that we are a follower of God, a follower of Yahweh. Um, and, uh, and if they see us doing things like lying or cheating or bullying or teasing other kids, um, that doesn't represent our God very well, does it? And so that was always something that really had a huge impact on me. Um, 
with kind of helping with that of honoring the name of God. We honor the name of God by keeping the commandments and walking the faith out as Yeshua taught. And so, uh, Katie, I think you nailed it. That's exactly, exactly my line of thinking. Well, I tell you, Pastor Man, I, I want to share just this neat little fun fact that I think ties into this. And a Pepsi Cola truck driver, someone who delivers Pepsi Cola to the stores and helps stock, if they're ever caught with any shirt or paraphernalia, hat, anything from Coca-Cola, the consequence is pretty bad. They'll sometimes lose their job. So there's actually a joke among them. They'll sometimes, uh, if both drivers, Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola, show up at a store to stock it, they might throw their hat in the other guy's truck just to try to be uh, aggravating and playful. So that's another example of misrepresenting who you are sent out from. All right, thank you. So now we're going to switch over to uh, a, a term that actually I really um, was really just learning a lot more about just this week. And um, it, it is Elohim. So the word Elohim is actually the first name uh, found in Genesis uh, of God. So Elohim says in Genesis, uh, it's used in Genesis 1. One in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And so I have this devotional right here. I am devotional, and it talks about the names of the of God and different things like that. I think Pastor Matt, you might have that one at your house from Mexico. It, I think you so, gave it to Ben and read yeah. it often. Yeah. So this is one that I've used and I've looked at it. We gave this uh, last year to kids' class at Mexico. And so it calls Elohim um, a strong power, a strong power. But as I was looking, and I don't think that that's wrong, but what I realized is actually, uh, I was looking through um, the Bible project. They have a great video for your parents, for you guys to look at together and kind of study together. This is really something, especially the older kids for parents, for you guys to just go into, I can't teach all of this. This is something for you guys to go in to venture on your own. But it, it really gets into the name Elohim. And the word Elohim is actually a title. It's not God's actual name, just like I am a, a daughter, just like you're a son or you're a daughter um, and your parent and your parents have the name of mom and dad. It's the title, right? It's so Elohim is a title that we have. And so it's the piece of a puzzle of who God is. So Elohim actually means mighty one, supreme one, or God, the creator. It is a um, general term used a lot in ancient times, and it doesn't always refer to the God we serve. It actually, from the Bible project, and um, Pastor Matt is allowed to jump in anytime, um, it, it represents uh, heavenly beings which is confusing. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah, so the I was going to bring up that up because it's kind of confusing. But yeah, the name Elohim is actually plural in Hebrew, um, even though it doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's always, you know. So when God is called Elohim, it doesn't mean that it's multiples, but the, the structure of the world uh, word is, is plural by nature. But yeah, it means the mighty ones. And so you have um, other angelic beings or uh, sometimes messengers or angels or whatnot, any type of spiritual being can also be referred to as Elohim. Yeah. Uh, in the book of Exodus, twice in the book of Exodus, the judges of Israel are referred to as the Elohim uh, because they're the, the ones with the authority in the context of the story. And so they're actually referred to as the Elohim. So it's the ones with the, the name carries the context of having absolute or at least a high level of authority uh, within whatever scope the context is. So lots of authority, lots of might, lots of power, just big, powerful uh, character. And so, of course, when Yahweh is referred to as Elohim, it's the absolute power and authority within the domain of everything. Uh, he is the Elohim. And, uh, but, but yeah, the, the title can be used uh, all throughout scripture to both judges and judges and uh, other spiritual beings as well, like angels and such. So um, I want you to, everyone, picture your mom in your head. Now, Havila, your mom that you pictured is not the same um, mom that, they, that the Ardens are picturing, is it? The title is mom. And so that's when we are saying Elohim, when we're spiritual beings, like up in heaven in God's uh, throne room, we have the cherubims and the 
different ones in there saying um hosanna hosanna glory to god in the high or they're praising god's name right so praising God's name. holy 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 yeah holy yep. holy holy yeah sorry and so they're praising god's name and so those might be considered elohim because they're in the spiritual realm but like pastor matt was saying yahweh yahweh he is the the highest of all so just it's a title but he is the king of kings he is the lord of lords he is over all so elohim basically means lord and it's just a title it's a generic name that can can just like a mom it means different things to different people but we all understand what the title or the role or the person who functions as a mom is it doesn't you don't have to say miss katie or katie price's mom you understand that i am mom when i'm talking to my daughters and that's the same way with god and so that was pretty much i feel like all of that we are going to get into today um pastor matt pete jason is there anything you would like to add before i give them call, talk about the thing that we're about to, the challenge that we're doing the bible challenge no are we, are we still talking about titles anything else that you want to add about elohim or yahweh any oh. of that stuff do you have anything else you want to add were, were you going to bring up father by chance not yet next week not yet no i'm good with elohim that's from the mighty ones yes okay so elohim. we're just going to end there because like i said um back with psalms uh 1, 9 10 it says those who know your name put their trust in you and so today we're only talking about yahweh and we're talking about elohim and then next week we will get into other titles other positions that god carries in our life so that sums up that i want to thank pastor matt and pete pastor pete and pastor jason for getting on with us but Okay, so are you guys ready for the challenge that um, the Fit Kids are getting ready to do? And um, I. Bye, guys. Great to see you. Hey, Evie, what's up? You guys have a good day. And Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Okay, so um, we are. I'm doing in our children's class, our in person kids' classes. I realize some people don't know all the books of the Bible. How many of you know all the books of the Bible in order? You do? Good job. All right. So I don't. And some of the children didn't. And what I realized also is some of the children have a hard time finding books in the Bible. So we have a challenge between now and Sukkot for you to memorize the books of the Bible in order. And so you don't have to do it. But if you do, if you do work on it, you do learn them by, before Sukkot. And you can send me a video of you telling me the books of the Bible. I don't care if you sing it in a song or whatever. Um, this will be helpful for you for the rest of your life. If you can send me a video of you saying the books of the Bible and we have contact, uh, you will win a prize. You'll get a prize and I'll send it to you in the mail. Um, so if you want to participate, you can. And if you don't, it's okay. All right. So the books of the Bible, there's all kinds of Bible songs out there. Um, there are all kinds of different strategies and a lot of you are homeschooled so you can work on that um, as part of your Bible study time if you want, if you don't have other things going on. So that's all for today. And so I'm going to um, end with prayer and then we'll stop the recording. Okay. Father, I thank you so much for letting us come here today. I thank you, Father, for helping us to know your name so that we can put our trust in you. Help us to understand all the titles and the roles you play in our life. And I thank you, Father, for just teaching us, giving us hearts to hear, ears to receive. And I pray that you just plant these seeds deep into our hearts so that we can grow um, and be strong and mighty for you in the kingdom. So I thank you. I ask that you bless all that can have heard this message. And Yeshua Messiah's name we pray. Amen. All right. Let me.